Pop Alliance episode number 27. 27. We are your hosts, I'm the Wizard Ryan Lee. I am the Spaceman Keith Washaleski. And we're going to jump right into the news this week. Yep. So we got a lot of little things, nothing huge this week, but we did get some news about Suicide Squad movie. Okay. Coming up. And the possibility that Batman could be in it. Ooh, I like yes. this. Okay. So we don't know if this would be Ben Affleck's Batman, if this would just be some standing in the suit and background kind of stuff. But basically what the storyline is that's been leaked is that Amanda Waller mm -hmm. knows that the Joker is the only one that has had any contact with Batman. Okay. And Batman has become public enemy number one for them. So the Suicide Squad is going to be there to take out Batman. Hmm. So they need the Joker's help in giving them intel. So it's a smart way to bring the Joker <clears throat> into the Suicide Squad. Yeah. A lot of us were like, what's the point of him even being in the, in the movie? Hmm. So what do you think? Uh, that's weird. So I've read this. I, I've kind of forgot about it because it was kind of early in the yes. week and stuff like that. Um, but it's an interesting rumor because they're trying... So it's you know it's going to be... Whether Ben Affleck is playing the Batman right. in the scenes or not, it's the same Batman. Right. But it's going to be interesting to see... Uh, they're trying to make this Batman like secretive, yes. like you know he's not supposed to be well known. He's like an yes. urban legend. No one's had any contact right. with him outside uh, of the Joker. The Joker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's an urban legend. So nobody yeah. else in his rogue gallery right. has really fought him, or else he's defeated him in some other ways. So I think it's kind of cool. I think this is kind of their way to maybe do a more developed DC universe yeah. without like being like, well, Batman's been around forever. Yes, so, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I really, I like it too. This is the way they're going to bring the Joker in and make sense. Yes. And that's yeah. what we're looking for. Is this going to make sense to have the Joker in this film? So, yeah. all right, there you go. Uh, we got a, they're calling it a motion poster for Daredevil. Oh, yeah. So basically yeah. this is it's kind cool. of like an internet spot rather than a TV spot. And it just shows Matt Murdock walking down the streets of Hell's Kitchen, things going on around him. And the big thing about this was, as he's speaking, you get to see his shadow, well, not his shadow, his reflection being cast in the wet street. Uh -huh. Looks like okay. his red costume. Really? Okay. Yeah, so have you not seen I this yet? See this. Okay. No. So it looks like his red costume as he's talking about. Everybody understands, uh, you know, Frank Miller's Daredevil in the black costume. We get that as part of it. But we do want to see Daredevil eventually in his red costume. Yes. That's what we know him as. So maybe this is a little hint that we are going to get that at some point yep. this season. Was and, it Frank Miller or was it Casada? Why am I thinking... Frank Miller did the black, yeah. Oh, okay. The black okay. outfit, wow. yeah. Okay. And so, and then in the background as well, you get to see the Avenger Tower. Oh, <laughs> yes. you really? In the background, yes. No, okay. That's you cool. gotta look for it. Cool it is in the far back corner, but you can see the Avengers Tower nice. as well. Nice, okay. So, yeah. Awesome. So, there you go. Uh, it's kind of exciting. I Daredevil was one of my favorites growing up. Yes. I remember yeah, one of my cool. first comic series that I got into was Daredevil vs. Punisher. It wasn't one of my favorite while you were reading Daredevil. I was reading Iron Man. Oh, okay. But, you know, I still I still like the character. Yes. I liked it when he appeared in the Hulk uh TV movie. Yes, that's so, right. Yes, that's so, right. You yeah. did. Yeah. So, all right. So, this is exciting. I know I got the day off of work. I just want the red so costume. So, I want to see point. it. Yes. And yeah, I yeah, think so. we're going to get that. All right. Yes. And then, this is kind of just a, a fun one to throw out this week. Uh, are you a fan of Harry Houdini? <laughs> I mean, yeah, for sure. Are you a fan of uh, Arthur Why Conan Doyle Sherlock? Yes. Okay. Well, what would happen if Arthur Conan Doyle and Harry Houdini teamed up? X-Files style, an investigative paranormal activity. So wait, not Sherlock, but no. the author and Arthur Conan Doyle. Houdini. Yes. That would be a weird mix of uh, uh, right. show. Well, the creators of House are making a 10-episode series for Fox. Okay. It's going to focus on Harry Houdini and Arthur Conan Doyle as a team. Now, in real mm -hmm. life, Arthur Conan Doyle was uh, religious to a certain point. He believed yeah. in a lot of uh, mysticism. And Harry Houdini was complete opposite. His whole thing was debunking it. Okay. So it would be neat to see them together in this team and going into after <laughs> supernatural it's, things. It sounds just like a Dana and Mul like yes. a Scully and Mulder type Absolutely. situation where Absolutely. you know Mulder's got this crazy theory yes. and Dana's there, you know, trying to prove him wrong. The uh, articles that came out said in an X Files type scenario. It sounds so like it. In a that's what's going to be. I think that's it's cool. kind of a fun thing. Yeah. Who would you cast? For either one. Do you have anybody you could think of that would be a good Harry Houdini? Oh, I don't know who I... I don't know. I, I That's really, hard. That's hard. Uh, I mean... I, nobody in my mind is typecast. I never think of Harry Houdini like, oh man, that would make a really good yes, Harry Houdini. Yes, yes. How about we take the British guy, Benedict Cumberbatch, and uh -huh. make him Harry Houdini. He's everywhere. Oh, And then I we take an American and make, him. and make him Arthur Conan Doyle. Hmm. Let's have Benedict Cumberbatch as Harry Houdini and then have... Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> <laughs> well, these are like an ultimate matchup. So there you go. Yes. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. Anyways, 
fun stuff. So just a little bit of things. We got a Pixels trailer that came out this week. We're going to yes. talk more about that on the podcast. So tune in. We got a lot more news with that. But what do you got in tech this week? All right. In tech, I just got a few things as well. Uh, basically, it uh, looks like Apple is planning to launch their own kind of TV service this fall. Okay. It's going to include about 25 TV channels. Uh, from the likes of uh, ABC, CBS, Viacom, okay. Discovery, and Fox, uh, but nothing tied with Tom Comcast. They've kind of um, had it, had their outs with Comcast. Yeah, Comcast is not doing well yes. <laughs> right now. Yeah, so uh, anything NBC reputation. Universal won't show up on this service. Okay. Um, another fun thing was that so recently there was a a event called South by Southwest. Yes. I don't know if you heard. Oh, it's of course. Okay, okay. Of course. It's, it's music. Uh, I can't remember. It's music something and interactive yeah, yeah. Uh, things. And it's basically a showcase sometimes for new things and everything. But kind of the breakout thing that everybody was kind of using and kind of I saw articles about everywhere was this app called Meerkat. Yeah. I saw and this. Meerkat is basically a, it's a live stream app. Yeah. It's basically you have your phone, you tweet it out that you're live streaming and you can stream it. And I guess people were streaming concerts and events and all sorts right. of things. And it was just being used left and right. Uh, uh, Louise Dreyfus from uh, Seinfeld and yes. Veep, she was there, she was using it, like different, you know, people were doing podcasts and live, uh, you know, Meerkat. That's and cool, stuff and very cool. So, very cool, very interesting. This is, people are saying this possibly might be the new Twitter. Uh, in 2007, we had Twitter kind of break out from South by Southwest, and in 2009, uh, Foursquare was the big hit. Right. Then, you know, those kind of have gone their own ways and everything, so Meerkat could be the next big thing. All right, that's we'll kind see. of a cool idea. Live stream your life. That's right. Uh, on the uh, game side, I have Star Wars Battlefront is actually announced to be debuted at Star Wars Celebration. Oh, April. very nice. Um, how do you feel about Star Wars, like Star Wars Battlefront? Do you play? I played play some Battlefront. Yeah, okay. I think it's neat. I, I'm glad that they're debuting it there. So, yes. yes. Yeah, I think it's cool. I've been. I went to two Star Wars celebrations in Orlando. When okay. I, was there. Uh, I got. They were fortunate to go back uh, there for two years, and it was kind of disappointing because there was nothing major at the time. Star Wars: The Old Republic was being developed, oh, okay. and they did a panel for concept art and stuff, and they never debuted like gameplay right. or anything right. or had like stuff. That I was like, man, wow, this would be like the perfect front. For them to get Star Wars fans, yes, to make them play absolutely. Them. Uh, the only game they did show there was Star for uh, Star Wars Unleashed, Force Unleashed Two. Okay. So and everything. Uh, but so I'm excited that they are getting uh, you know to see Star Wars Battlefront first. I think it's very a good nice. Event. Give so it to cool. the fans first. That's yes, great. I, I agree. And also, the game has been officially announced for the Xbox One, PS4, and PC. All right, makes sense. Yep. Um, a little on the. Uh, Downer side, Hideo Kojima looks like he's going to be leaving Konami. I saw that. Uh, as there's well. been kind of a turmoil inside with Kojima Productions and Konami, and they're basically parting their ways after Metal Gear Solid V comes out. Uh, Kojima says he's going to stay on board, basically as a contractor. Uh, all the while, they're finishing up Metal Gear Solid V. Okay. And then Konami, after Kojima leaves, says they're going to, you know, keep, you know, it's their IP. Yeah. So they're going to keep doing Metal Gear Solids after. Okay. So kind of. Interesting, sad. We'll see where where that takes. Uh, I guess Metal Gear Solid from here on. Right, right. So we'll never know. Um, a little fun thing is that I know last week I said Jason Voorhees is going to yes. be the guest character. This week they announced Predator is going to be crazy. Crazy. I'm sold. I'm sold. Right? Yes, yes. Predator. I'm I'm good. Let's do it. So Mortal Kombat 10 is going to see uh, Predator. Uh, Rock Band 4 looks like it's going to have a October release. Oh, nice. So not, All right. not, you know, a little earlier in the Christmas season, not November. That's so. good. And that's about the time people start thinking about buying for the holidays. So, exactly, yeah. exactly. Good that's on great. Yeah, so it'll be out before Thanksgiving. So you yeah. know, family gatherings, you get a nice. new rock band. We'll so be doing it. I'm excited, yep. Uh, two other big things was that uh, Nintendo, uh, first of all, Nintendo is teaming up with a Japanese company called DNA. Uh, to basically push itself into the mobile world. All right, you were telling me about this. Yeah, yeah. it's going to um, start creating uh, basically new original games with their you know set of characters or whatnot. Uh, DNA is kind of known as a free-to-play company, okay. so people are worried that this will be microtransaction-heavy yes. or something like that. We'll have energy meters. We'll see what happens, but the first of these games is supposed to be slated to come out. So are these going to be their actual property characters like Mario yes. and, and Zelda yep. and all those? Okay, awesome. Yeah, exactly. And they're all new games. They, don't, they said they don't want to specifically um, target you know, recreating Wii U games okay. or older games. They want to make new, fun games for people. Excellent. So right. we'll see how that turns out. Would you play a Nintendo game? Yeah. I would, unless we get into the microtransactions and I have to <laughs> yes. buy 49 gems to continue uh, or rest my player for 24 hours. Oh my so, gosh. Yes. I was like, well, I guess I'm done for today. Yeah, exactly. So, oh well, I don't have any free time tomorrow, Nintendo. <laughs> so, uh, other quick thing is that they kind of hinted at revealing a new console next year. They really? They don't have any details about it, but uh, Iwata said 
Uh, Nintendo is currently developing a dedicated platform with a brand new concept. Hmm. So that is interesting. We will see what's good. that's not we good until next year. We'll see. Yeah, we will see. Uh, <laughs> okay. Oh man, that's terrible. Uh, the last thing is that the Elder Scrolls Online has gone uh, by to play. Um, so it's now called Elder Scrolls Online Tamriel Unlimited. And now if you pick up a copy of um, the PC version of Elder Scrolls Online, you can go on, no subscription fee. You nice. just go online. Pretty, right now people are saying the store is actually pretty great. Um, there's not a lot of any like pay to win mechanics, like it's mostly cosmetic yeah, okay, and stuff. Okay. So it's a good time to check it out. I know the game's like kind of full price still, yeah. but if you're interested in it and you did, were worried about subscription fees, uh, I would say just pick it up and kind of get into the world right now. Uh, we got the console release coming in June, so right, and yeah. I'm excited for that. So. Definitely. So that's all I've got Very for cool. this today. All right, excellent. Well, let's do some comic book reviews. We got some good ones this week. Yes. So let's go to our section we like to call Nice Rack. All right, everybody, welcome to Nice Rack. I have a DC comic this week Ooh, for you. Yeah, yes. I know I don't do a lot of DC, but this is a good one. So we have Batgirl Endgame. This is a number one one-shot. And this is about the Endgame ongoing storyline that's going to be happening in DC. And it's about the Joker basically jokerizing everybody, turning them into kind of Joker zombies. <laughs> and 97% of the population has been affected. Batgirl is trying to save the rest of them. Okay. And so in this comic... We get to see Barbara Gordon trying to help people get over a wall so they can escape an oncoming Jokerized mob. And in the process, a little girl gets stranded, and it's about her having to go out and try to rescue this girl. Now, there's no words in this comic. Oh, <laughs> so really? the very beginning That's and okay. the very end. It is nothing but pictures in here, so you're just going to get wordless panels. <laughs> That's why it makes this comic so good. The storyline okay. is done with the drawings. And so you get to tell everything that's going on, all the motion. Bangle that does the art for this is fantastic. Right. Really, really good. And there's one part where she has to convince the girl to smile to try to get to the mob, and I'm not giving away anything by telling you guys that. And it's just the expression that she does in it, it's, it's fantastic. So nice. uh, this is a definite pickup. Even if you're not a Batgirl fan, it's just a great story to pick up. So definitely recommend Batgirl Endgame. Number one one shot. That's great to hear, actually. So all cool. right, all right, there you nice. go. So I'm going to counter his DC by doing two more okay. image titles because we right. always do image for some reason. We love they image. do a lot of number one yes. and a lot of cool stories. Yes. So I'm going to do one that uh, I was interested in this week yeah. by uh, Mark Millar and uh, uh, Sean Gordon uh, Murphy as the artist. And this is Chrononauts. Yes. And this actually just got picked up for movie rights. Yes, and actually both those people, Mark Millar and Sean, are going to be the executive producers on the movie. So That's awesome. Go. Yes. So hopefully it's pretty faithful. So this is uh, actually a really cool... I wasn't sure what to expect. Yeah. Uh, I didn't read up on the summary or whatever. But it's a really cool take on basically time travel and everything. Mm -hmm. And you basically got these two gentlemen. You've got uh, Quinn and Riley. And basically, they've invented this time machine, right? Yes. And they basically worked it into these suits. So they've got these suits that they can wear, and they travel through like a portal. Right. Kind of reminds me a little of Stargate. Yeah, I was going to say, it's <laughs> a lot like Stargate. Yeah, a lot so, like it. So, uh, you know, they're, they're I don't know, <laughs> I don't know why. They're the inventors, and also they're going to have the world watch them to be the first people through this. Yes, that's and live on TV. All yes. this time traveling. It exactly. never makes, it doesn't make sense to me to send like, the people that created it through first. Ah, uh, yeah, that part's but, a little sketchy. Yeah. Yes, but, but they're, they're the pioneers. Yes, yes. So, so, that's it. so they go through, and something happens, and one of them gets diverted off track, yes. and then they try to send the other guy through to help him out, and he gets stuck in a almost looks like an impossible situation yeah. at the end. Yeah, it is awesome. Like I, I like really it. like this book. Uh, the artwork just yeah. really flows. I almost I got I need to go back and check out more of Sean Gordon, uh, yes. Gordon Murphy's work because uh, it's really cool. Just really kind of. I don't American anime-ish, but not really. No. No. Yeah, but I know what you're saying. Yeah, it's kind of got a serious style to it, yes. but I don't know. It's really awesome. Just check it out. Hey, I'm, it's a great comic. I'm excited for the movie based yes. off of one comic. Exactly. So I exactly. should tell you. Uh, and we've got a runner-up this week yes. called uh, Red One. Yes. And this is a all Dotson <laughs> endeavor. The Dotsons are hot right now. They're doing Princess Leia this week. Yep. So yeah. We got Xavier, Terry, and Rachel Dotson yep. all working on this one book about a. Russian spy who becomes American. Yes. And she's not just a Russian spy, she becomes our greatest American hero, basically. Yes. Her name is Vera, and she works for um, the USSR, yeah. basically. And this takes place in the 80s? Yeah, it looks like around that time say, period. Yeah. And she's basically shipped over because all of a sudden we have what people are calling our vigilante, basically. Yes. Um, which is 
Um, man, I can't remember his name right now. The carpenter. Carpenter. They call him the carpenter. Yeah. It looks a bit like a scarecrowish yeah. type of person, and he's kind of killing off people that. He's kind of a like moral him. murderer. Yeah, he's that's, a, a, that's a great term. Right. That's yes. a great way to put it. Moral murderer. Yeah. And they're afraid that uh, if this guy has an in, that they can send over a Vera and basically have her become a popularity, and then they want to take down this whole contingent uh, that's rising in popularity with a whole religious sect, basically. It's like all, all the process is trying to prevent another Cold War, basically. Yes, from yeah, yeah, so they so, don't yeah. Want, yes, they don't want the Cold War from happening. So it's a really beautifully drawn, really cool book. I really like Vera's personality. Yes, I do too. Uh, she is very... Uh, Sexual? It's so, in a respectful yes. way, which is the yeah. doctor to Dotson's credit. So, uh, yeah, yeah. maybe with the exception of the last panel but yeah. in the book, but yes. Yes, very, very cool. Very, um, she even has like this, uh, this gentleman who ends up uh, being her contact here in the States yeah. and everything. He creates the costume and stuff for her. I just really like this book. I do too. I didn't really expect to pick it up, uh, and I'm glad I did. So, I would really recommend uh, Red One. And it's a thick first issue. It as is. Well, so. It is. So, really great. Two ninety nine. Excellent. So great issue. Red All One right. and Chrononauts and Batgirl Endgame. Batgirl Endgame. All, All right. Stuff. Very good, guys. Thanks for watching the show. We appreciate it. Of course, check out our website, geekpopalliance.com. Yep. You check out our podcast this week. We're going to go in more detail on comics and all kinds of news that's going on. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. TV shows. We play games on there. So it's a lot of fun. So go to geekpopalliance.com to get those. And our webcomic. Yes, every we Tuesday. Weekly webcomic. We have a weekly every webcomic. Tuesday. Yes. yes. Bruce Campbell approved webcomic. <laughs> that he retweeted awesome. our webcomic. That webcomic was really week, cool. So. Yeah. Our all one right. moment of fame. Our one moment of fame. All right, guys. So until next week, I am the Wizard Ryan Lee. And I am the Spaceman Keith Wachaleski. If you're a geek, raise your hand. If you're not, raise your stand. Yeah.